Well, all the news channels are raving over the decision by BP Pulse to buy $100 million worth of charges from Tesla. I'm sure many of my viewers will be waiting for my take on this. Nope, sorry to disappoint you. It's far more interesting news I unveiled on a recent filming trip. Well, BP buying Tesla charges is headline news today, but none of you are going to use it at 85 pence per kilowatt hour. Certainly not me. And the move is absolutely obvious to anyone with an ounce of business sense. If you have to buy your charges, buy the best on the market and negotiate a sensible price. There's no new news here. But this, well, this might just change your mind about which EV to buy. Goodbye, Tesla. Hello. <laughs> well, Dave Takes It On brings you news that has not yet even broken. One of the main reasons that why buyers reject an EV is the charging speed. They still believe that you need to stand around waiting for several hours every single day. Now, we all know it's not true, but this is what they're told. My Tesla, for example, is now seven years old. It's got an 85 kilowatt hour battery, of which 82 is usable. By the way, kilowatts is power, kilowatt hours is storage. My really old tech car charges a maximum rate of 150 kilowatts, so in theory I could fill the battery in about half an hour. But of course it doesn't. Firstly, I never totally drain my battery down to zero, just like ice car drivers don't drain their fuel tank to zero. Well, at least most of them. Second, the charging rate drops off as the battery fills. So in reality, I find that most charging sessions are around 30 to 40 minutes, say from 20% to 80%. Because of this time, compared to the five minutes to fill a petrol tank, the EV world and the scientists set off on an epic search to try to get recharging a battery time down to less than five minutes. Tesla kicked off the action. No, not with their supercharging network, as you expect, but with swappable batteries. Yeah, back over a decade ago, the idea was really simple. You design the car so the battery can be removed with the unscrewing of a relatively small number of fixing bolts. Then when your battery's low, you drive into a battery swap station and a robotic system removes your old battery, places it on a shelf, plugs it in so it recharges. Then takes a fresh full battery off another shelf and installs that in your car. You drive off with a full battery, just not the one you got went in there with. And you pay something obviously towards the service, depending I suppose on the size of the battery that your car uses. It failed. It was launched in California, and they set up the first of a series of swap stations, but most Tesla EV owners discovered two important things. First, most of them had solar PV and could charge at home, free. Second, 95% of all journeys, that still applies today, did not require them to charge the car battery at all. They could get home most days and top up from solar PV for free overnight. Yeah, I know solar doesn't work at night, but they also knew that. So they installed batteries to store it during the day when it did work and used it to charge the car battery at night when they got back. So Tesla too set off on an epic battery chemistry voyage of discovery. Each year new discoveries, new chemicals, new production techniques produce more powerful batteries that were much safer, ones that could almost no longer catch fire, ones with much higher power but lighter in weight and ones that could charge faster. Others around the world were also on their own epic journeys. As well as the batteries we already have discovered and have in mass production, there are a number of really exciting trials still ongoing. The journey is nowhere near over, in fact it's just starting. Solid state batteries and those running on common sea salt are two that might just get us to a full battery recharge in less than five minutes. But we're not there yet. It won't be for years. There are two clear market leaders, Tesla and others operating on an 800 volt system rather than the standard 400 volt. Tesla models, all of them except the base model 3 and Y, have a maximum charging rate of 250 kilowatts and can add between 175 and 200 miles in just 15 minutes. Certain Hyundai, Kia and Porsche models have 800 volt architecture and have very similar, maybe slightly faster charging rates. That's if you can actually find the right charger that can produce that much few can. So most people who undertake long journeys and need to stop and charge on the way discover that the human body also needs to stop to discharge and recharge every two, three or four hours, somewhere around about 200 miles on UK motorways. So if they're stopping anyway for 10 or 15 minutes to relieve themselves, grab a coffee and donut and get back in, the car's already replaced what it's used. Unlike the ice driver, by the way, who having stopped now needs to head to the petrol pumps and spend an extra five or ten minutes filling up before they can set off. 
Well, charging times are coming down. Prices are tumbling. Chemistry is offering much higher power to weight ratio performance. So battery sizes are also falling. I see the industry turning its attention to finding cheaper, more common and less destructive chemicals from which to make their batteries. Salt sounds perfect. Neo has just appointed a UK contract firm to build and install a battery swap station in the UK. Ha! <laughs> Bet that stopped you. Well, it did me. I was on a filming trip, as I said, with my eldest lad, Jonas, calling in at numerous motorway services, see what's about to happen. Now, anyone can wait till they're in and working and check the website or the app, but I prefer to go looking for what's already underway and get well ahead of the field. For privacy reasons, I will not state which motor I was on, nor where I was, nor who I spoke to, nor which company he worked for. But on one of my stops, we found an installation just about to go live, certainly within the next few days. We were armed with cameras and mic'd up. I approached one of the guys in a high-vis jacket. It turned out he was the boss, the big man, and he was ready for a break. So he decided to take some time and help us. We were shown round the new chargers in each, inside each and every box and cabinet was explained to us what it did right from the incoming 11,000 volts right down to the 400 volt chargers. He also talked extensively about the grid, the DNOs and the chargers, his, his experience, his knowledge and his thoughts and a few funny stories. No guesses or my mate told me or I used to be an electrician, just actual knowledge from a very senior guy in a company that has provided power and completed the installation of dozens of charger sites in the UK this year alone. Oh, by the way, the average time planning approval to completion and switch on is just over two months. Well, it was a fascinating insight into what's going on. And I'll be launching several videos covering all these issues over the next few me weeks in my new tech series starting in November every Wednesday night. There's an awful lot you don't know, and I didn't know, until this chance meeting. Anyway, after our tour, which we filmed and photographed in great detail, he brought us up to date on charging developments, charging times, then casually slipped in that he had just been given the plans for a Neo battery swap station. Are they totally stone cold insane? Or do they know something that we don't know? You see, if you're stopping for a toilet break and your car charges quicker than you take, why do you want anything quicker? It's a bit like my overnight off peak charging. Well, as long as it's ready in the morning, I don't care what time it actually finishes charging. Well, battery swapping was the subject of a video I launched almost two months ago. After investigation, I dismissed it. And there are two main reasons. First, batteries take a certain amount of time to charge safely. If you go too fast, you do damage. So they prefer to charge slowly, even LFP. So while it's great getting a fully charged battery fitted in less than three minutes, your old discharge one now has to go on a shelf and be charged, taking much longer to prolong its life, probably an hour or so. So cars can arrive at the swap station every three minutes and take on a full battery, but the old ones won't be ready for an hour or more. So you need at least 20 batteries ready for each hour it's open. Yeah, I know it's unlikely to have exactly 20 arriving each hour, but you need to have them just in case or a reasonably close number. But what size batteries? See, some cars have as little as 40 kilowatts, mine's 85, others range up anywhere to over 100 kilowatts. Are you going to have to have 20 of each size? That could include hundreds in store at any one time. That's like a mini power station. And they could all need to be on charge continuously at the same time, albeit all at different states of charge. Well, Jonas suggested they could be grid connected and use dead time to trade power. But if the price was right and they all sold excess power, and then a dozen cars arrived all with flat batteries, that wouldn't work. So you would need additional batteries to do this, meaning the batteries held aside for cars never made a profit from trading power. And if nobody arrived to swap, they never would make any profit anyway. So now if the swap station was full and had four cars in the queue, when you get there, you'd face at least a 15 minute wait. It would probably be quicker to just nip over to the ultra rapid charger and top up. The logistics simply didn't work in my mind. But second, there are millions of EVs already on the road, driving around quite happily with their batteries very firmly screwed in place. They cannot use battery swap ever. So these swap stations could only be used for new cars. Would you buy a battery swap car right now? Well, of course not. 
there are no battery swap stations already here. Not yet. So how long will it take to install a sensible number of swap stations sufficient to convince enough new owners to buy one? Well, it won't be before Christmas, I can tell you. It's unlikely to be before next Christmas either. But then later I discovered two more things in my research. As well as battery swap, NEO also install ultra-rapid chargers to give you a choice. So if the st swap station is empty, swap your battery. If it's full, just go and plug in. And that makes some sense, but then my mind suddenly stumbled on a definite use where it actually has a serious advantage. Buses. Picture this. A bus sets off and goes on a set route that takes pretty much the same time every trip, or traffic permitting. I guess that could easily be the best part of an hour. It could be more on some routes. So the bus sets off, does its route, returns to the depot. Three minutes later, it's got a new battery and it's ready to go again. Really fast turnaround. And the old flat battery now will go on full charge and it'll be full before the bus returns from the next trip. Perpetual motion. Well then, as previous videos have stated, someone else is working on contactless charging, like your mobile phone, where the charger is buried under the road surface and you charge as you drive. Test car has already completed over a thousand mile non-stop with just a tiny little battery by this method. Imagine that, getting in your car with a flat battery, setting off on a 500 mile trip non-stop and arriving with a full battery. <laughs> well, the conclusion is I actually don't have any idea which will win through in the end. I do suspect the days of plugging in are numbered, maybe within the next decade. I'll keep talking to as many people as I can to try to keep ahead. Thanks for watching and please subscribe so you don't miss the new series when it starts. I'm Dave.